So did Connecticut violate Pelco's rights? Of course not. <laughs> when did they ever? I hear some cynicism with your answer, uh, Preston. <laughs> I lived in Hartford, sir, stationed at Groton in Mystic. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So you know quite well the fine state of Connecticut. Bridge, okay? Yes, sir. Bridgeport and all the rest of them before they went bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, it did go bankrupt. Right. Well done, yes. <laughs> I cannot be too critical because I'm from the fine state of Pennsylvania, where not only did the state capital of Harrisburg have to file for bankruptcy protection in federal court, but the city of uh, uh, Pittsburgh uh, was so bankrupt, it actually required a state government bailout mm. um, at the tail end of the 20th century. So I can't be too critical. <laughs> All right. So. The court said, no, Connecticut did not violate uh, Pelco's constitutional rights. The majority opinion, for those of you uh, who are thinking this was a very conservative court, you should note that the majority opinion was written by one of the leading progressive justices at that time, Justice Benjamin Cardozo. Cardozo basically... Part, uh, claims theoretically what becomes known as the theory of selective incorporation. Helco had to demonstrate to the court that the right or liberty that he was claiming was an essential component of the nation's construction of ordered liberty. And that's the key phrase, ordered liberty. You have to show that your right or liberty is a part of the nation's history and tradition of ordered liberty. And this becomes known as the theory of selective incorporation. The court will incorporate selected or specific liberties or rights as applicable to the states via the 14th Amendment's Due Process Clause, if you can do what? Show that the right or liberty was or is an essential element of the nation's history and tradition of ordered liberty. Now, according to Cardozo, 